if he just plays right now just because he wants to play, you know, and he wants to perform and stuff, he might fuck up his career, you know? Like, if his wrist gets doomed, then he, he won't be able to play for like maybe like a year and stuff. This is Zento from Esports Heaven, and I have here with me Niski from Cloud9. Now, you guys just, I guess, kind of upset Team Liquid, uh, especially given the circumstances with a sub. Um, now, you picked Vagar, and I believe this is your first time playing Vagar professionally, at least within LCS. Yeah. So, uh, what is it about this pick that makes him pretty good in the meta right now? Um. I don't know, to be honest, I think Vega is just really good when you know how to play the champion, I think, and you know the limits about it. Also, I don't think a lot of people know how to play against Vega because you never see it usually. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like a huge bonus as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that game I picked it because they didn't really have any champion that could get out of my cage if they were in it, you know. And yeah, I mean, we needed CC and I felt like I was like, mm, you know, I can play Vega here. Yeah. So we just picked it, you know. So I noticed that you built Proto Belt on it. <laughs> now, now, when I, I think, like, I used to play Vega like way back in the day, like season two. And, you know, that was obviously when Proto Belt wasn't in the game. But when you think of Vega as a champion, you think, okay, he's not like supposed to be super aggressive, but then you build Proto Belt on him. So I was like, wait, what? What's going on? So could you walk me through that mindset of that build? Um, and basically I run Spellbook and um, Protobalt. Uh, I think Protobalt is nice because it gives me kind of like an escape plan or an aggressive plan as well. Like I feel like the champion is immobile so I just made him mobile, you know. Um, also I run Spellbook so I could go like Ghost and like Barrier, Heal, Ignite for more damage and stuff. So yeah, I mean I think it's, the Protobalt just makes it nice because people don't really expect it. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh there's a Vega, you know, he's a freak, he'll just go. Yeah. But then, I either have like a ghost or like a heal or like my proto belt, you know. Uh -huh. So yeah, I think it's just, uh, I don't know, I just like the champion and I don't really play him like just to full burst people and stuff. I play him in my style and I think it's it worked really well. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so I noticed also that teams are picking more up on the Corky pick. Uh, so could you talk me through why Corky is also in the meta currently now too? Because um, Corky is kind of a strong laner. He doesn't really have that many counters in my opinion. Um, usually you can go even in like any matchup. And also his package timings are really good in the early game. So I think Gorky is just a good scaling champion, like a scaling champion and also good in lane, like not really risky, you know, and also a good blind. So I think that's why a lot of people are picking it right now. And I mean, it seems really good to be honest. Like as a blind pick at least. Yeah, I agree. Um, so on to Kumo. Uh, he was just put in this game, and people weren't expecting the most from him. You know, he's he's a rookie. So uh, how do you think he did, and uh, how quick was the decision in like putting Kumo in this week? Um, I mean, Kumo started screaming with us a bit last week, uh -huh. and this week he screamed the whole week. So he played a lot of games with us, and. I mean, I realized from the beginning that Kumo was actually really good if he's like confident in himself and also if he plays the right champions for him. So I don't think, I feel like he didn't really expect to be this good, I think. But I knew that he was really good from the beginning as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I just have to give him like a bit of confidence, you know. But once he got the confidence, I feel like he, I mean, he kind of, what do I say, he pushed his limits really well today. And yeah, I'm really proud of what Kumo did today for sure. Yeah, uh, I was kind of concerned when I saw the draft because, you know, there's Aatrox, Power Pick, and then you have this newer player on Jace, which is supposed to be an aggressive mm -hmm. pick, and you need to play aggressive or else you lose. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, was this just a, a major confidence in uh, allowing him to pick this this pick that's supposed to be very aggressive? Um, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of his play style, to be honest. Um, I mean, I think he's good on Jace, for example, and also he's good when he can push his limit, as I said, and on Jace it's kind of easy to do, because your lane phase is really strong. And yeah, I mean, I think he's just really strong in it. It's a strong laner, and it's not bad into Aatrox, I think, as well. So yeah, I think Jace was, is kinda, was the right pick there for Kumo, for sure. Okay, let's uh, talk about the other aspect of this situation, because 
Licorice had said he's kind of having some wrist issues. Uh, so what's your opinion on just taking care of your physical health as a pro player? Like, is this, are the hours of, in which a pro player works for practice, do you think this is kind of unsustainable in order to, uh, I guess, avoid injury? Like, how do you view uh, taking care of yourself and your wrists uh, as a pro player? Do you, is this something that you worry about with your career? Um, I mean, I think, uh, for example, Licorice case, I think it's really important that he takes it seriously because it's better to take like a week or two weeks or a month off right now and fix like whenever it hurts. Yeah. Because if he just plays right now just because he wants to play, you know, and he wants to perform and stuff, he might fuck up his career, you know. Like if his wrist gets doomed, then he, he won't be able to play for like maybe like a year and stuff. So I think it's really important that he takes care of it. And personally, I didn't really have that many issues with my wrist yet. And I hope it will never happen, but if it happens for sure, um, one thing is like I will either take a break or make sure that I, I handle it really well. And I feel like pushing yourself when it's like hurting, it's never gonna be like good. So yeah, I mean even like Uzi I, for example, I think he has, he also has like wrist, wrist issues. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. he pushed through it and it made it worse. So I think anytime my wrist hurts or like any part of my body hurts, for sure I'm I'm gonna take either a break or at least make the mind but know that I would need some time off. Uh, okay, well let's let's not end on such a dour note. Uh, so I, I want to talk about the idea of I don't know if you've ever heard of this Bruce Lee quote, but it's I don't fear the man that has practiced a thousand kicks once. I fear the man that has practiced one kick a thousand times. So <laughs> with that said, uh, how do you feel of expanding your champion pool and trying to master so many different champions? Like say you pulled out the big R today, but and Cloud9 is known for pulling out very eccentric picks and, and like having this unorthodox type style. Uh, so how do you view that as uh, being a mid laner and, and trying to expand your champion pool? Do you ever feel like uh, you're going to get to a point to where you're a master of none? Um, I mean, I feel like I usually, like in the past, before the travels, I was just trying to play with the meta champions and kind of play whatever everyone's playing, you know. But after the travels, I realized that I should just play the champions that I am good at. And it's not necessarily the champions that people play. For example, like the Vega, no one plays it. But I was like, I like the champion. The champion is cool. And then I was just playing it, you know. And I think it's going to be like this for many, many more champions because. Champions necessary like some master in it like you need to play the champion the right way, right? Mm -hmm. So for example if I play Azir and I don't play the right way But I just play it because it's OP or like everyone plays it and it's not gonna end well But if I just play my own champion that I know how to play it's gonna be ten times more better than just following what everyone plays So yeah, right now I'm trying to get like an like a big champion pool with a lot of random picks that people don't play against So yeah, I'm doing my best and it's not easy at all, but it's also fun because I'm just experimenting a lot of champions, you know, so. That's uh, most of what League of Legends is, right? That's why you got into this now, yeah. so. Okay, well, this has been Azento from Esports Heaven and Niski from Cloud9. Thank you. Thank you. I assume if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed the content. So if you did, subscribe, and also check out my other content that's more analytical and opinionated. But otherwise, keep it locked at esportsheaven.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.